the Holy Spirit can equally and easily prompt you to say no as yes. And that's the meaning of the, in the Bible, let your yea be yea and let your nay be nay. It's right there in the Bible. And really, as you know, with our community here and, and around the world, we just have those two guidelines, no people pleasing and no private thoughts. And that saying no is absolutely essential. In fact, Noelle and I were talking about that she, when she was going to give her concert today, she kind of went, oh, it's time, and she came in and she just sat down and, but she really didn't feel it. She didn't feel to, to give the concert at that moment. And so we talked about that at, at dinner. It, it, it would have been perfectly fine and wonderful to just say, no, I don't feel it, you know, and ask if anybody else wanted to, you know, play the keyboard, lead the session, da 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 da, and to just, just say no, as they say with the drugs, <laughs> just say no in that moment. It, and, and that's one thing that's so beautiful, we have so many mighty companions here, we have a team of those that are willing to shine and share and express, and, and, and we don't want anybody to, to feel like they have to do something out of a sense of duty, or obligation, or any, any other motive except the joy of the Spirit prompting you to do it. So that was just another good example of, of even like a nuance of, of saying no, like, no, I don't feel it right now. Um, and then there can be a time when she could have felt it or it could have played out however, but um, no is an absolutely essential word in the Holy Spirit's vocabulary. And uh, I know I could tell you parable upon parable. I've told this one many times, but there was a woman named Ruth who came to live at the Peace House and she seemed to be, from the world's perspective, have a very untrained mind, but yet she was guided to come there and she had worked in the circus and uh, she was working through a lot of issues, a lot of anger at God, a lot of anger at men, and a lot of different kind of issues, but um, there was a time when she lived there at the Peace House and she would come to me and I, I would say to her, if you have any question at all that has to do with, with perception, your mind, healing, forgiveness, come to me whenever. You can even wake me up in the middle of the night uh, if you have something like that to request of me. But if it's just ask me to do this and do that and, and so on and so forth, it's really not the best use of my time. My time is used by the Holy Spirit, you know, in this healing and, and so I was just giving her the invitation in terms of healing. And, yeah, that was a thing for her. She, she <coughs> just had a lot of, we could say, need and lack, and to the point of, give me, give me. Some of you might have seen um, the movie, What About Bob? Mm -hmm. The Bill Murray <laughs> character. I need, I need, I want, I want. That was like Ruth. And so, when I was there, and also when we would have roommates that would come in, her philosophy seemed to be something like, give me an inch and I'll take a mile. <laughs> you know, it was like a rope. It was like, can you help me out with one little thing? And then, two hours later, you know, there's, there's gimme, 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 want, 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 lots of other things. And it was great because I was just flowing with the Holy Spirit. And I, after I told her, if you have a request for healing, I'll join with you, but I'm, I really am not interested in the other. She would ask me to do all these kind of things for her. And, and I remember one day just going, I'd be doing something, she'd ask me, and say, no, 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 and, and then if she ever had a question about her mind, or wanted to join in healing, or had a question about forgiveness, perception, I was fully there for her. I, I would spend hours with her on one of those requests. But with all these other kind of ego, 
gimme, gimme, want, want, whims, it was just no, no, no. And the funny thing was, the man moved into the Peace House too, and he had a huge issue about saying no. He was, he was raised in these New Thought Unity churches where yes was, say yes to God, like, like the like the movie that came out a year or two ago, Yes Man, yeah. with Jim Carrey, where he says yes to every request. Well, this man who moved into the Peace House, Mark, he had, he could not say no. He felt like to say no was to reject. He had equated no with rejection, and yes with positive joy and love and acceptance. And he was, he, he simply would, he would, had a pattern of saying yes to everything that anybody requested of him in his life and getting more and more angry uh, and feeling like he was coerced and overburdened and totally overwhelmed by saying yes to everything from, for everyone. And so that was his main issue. So when he moved in, he and Ruth were now roommates. And I just sat back and watched and I went, oh man. And he started right away when, when uh, she was like, can you help me move my bed, and can you help me do this, and can you help me do that? And she would, and he would say, yes, 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 and then he would just get all this anger coming up as he said yes to her every egoic request. And he felt more furious and furious, and then he would kind of explode in anger. She would kind of step back, and then she would go right back with him, you know, with the next day with another hundred requests. And he would just get more frustrated day after day. He, it was a, it was an assignment. <laughs> this was a, this was a forgiveness assignment mm. from the man who couldn't say, say yes. no <laughs> to the woman who couldn't help but asking for <laughs> him to do everything for her. And that was again that you have to, after a while you start to see how the Holy Spirit, you know, works these things. It was really cute to see them go through. And then, and they both did go through great healing. Yep. You'll find that, you know, it will help you so much like in relationships. If you've got a boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, and his wife, and, and you're kind of caught into a bit of people pleasing, you know. You want to be liked, you want to be adored. So, okay, I'll do it, you know. What? Will you watch the wrestling match with me? Yeah, yeah, we'll watch the wrestling match. And, We'll do this and this and this, and then there's the hope that, you know, okay, we'll go to the movie on the weekend or something in exchange or something like this. It's not good to be in bargaining relationships where you're doing trade-offs, you know, comp constantly compromising with a partner, you know. Okay, we'll do it your way, but then we're going to do it my way. You know, what are we reinforcing, your way and my way? You know, it's really tuning into your guidance and your prompts, and when you really do that, you can confidently say no. Usually, this, this is how the Holy Spirit says no. No, but thank you for asking. That's how the Holy Spirit says no. It's a firm no. It's not a maybe. It's not a wishy-washy. It's no, no thanks. I, I remember my biological mother was always asking me, as I'm going through this mind training and doing more with miracles and everything, it's come to the family gathering, the birthday for whatever, the niece or the nephew or aunt or whatever, and it's like request, 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 you know, come for football games or Thanksgiving, all these holiday requests. This got to the point where the Holy Spirit was using me so much, I really didn't have the time. Uh, I wasn't guided to go to a lot of those old events that I used to always go to, because I was into following the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was always so gentle, it was always like, no thanks, or no, but thanks for asking. And occasionally, I would get a yes, like, can you come to your niece's birthday party? Mm, yes, I'll be there. At the beginning too, these were like, like, sometimes weeks in advance, and I was learning to be very spontaneous and just follow what my heart was telling me. And so, oftentimes I would get a request for, can you come to this party or this gathering, get-together, family get-together in three weeks on, on Wednesday, the November, whatever. And I would say, hmm, <coughs> I, I don't have a feeling, strong feeling right now, but closer to time, 
I'll let you know. That's just what started coming through. And for my biological mother, she'd say, what do you mean? Tell me now. And I'd say, I don't know right now, I'm, I, but I'll let you know what I'm guided to do. Well, this went on for a couple years. You'll let me know what you're guided to do? Since when are you listening to guidance? I've raised you up from a baby and all these years I can hardly get you to go to church now. Wait till I see what I'm guided to do, you know. I, had, I, was, I took a lot of that, but, but see, I was, I, Noel was saying I'm just going to be honest and really feel what I'm feeling and at, at some moments I was just like, hmm, I, I don't feel anything right now, but I'll let you know closer to time. And for her that was just an absolutely unacceptable answer. What do you mean? So she pressed me on it and I said, I'm, I don't know, I, I haven't received my guidance yet. Oh, please, you know. But see, after a while of me saying that every single time, or yes, or no, or I'll let you know closer to time, I think it must have dawned, it, it was finally reflected back to me like, huh, he's very sincere about this <laughs> guidance thing. He's not, he's not joking, <laughs> you know, about the guidance. It's like the guidance is obviously pretty important. And, and then that, that was just a reflection that I was being very, very sincere about the guidance and, and not trying to play any games about it, just being very straight and honest. Yeah. It's beautiful how it works. But the first time you're guided to do it, it can be such a change of a pattern that that somebody, the doubt thought can get reflected back, like, well, since when do you get guidance, or since when do you consult <coughs> guidance? Since now. <laughs> you know, like, I'm trying, please, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm really going for this, you know, I'm, I really am, and that's what I would say, you know, and try to play a game with it. Just be authentic to what's going on.